Pterodactyl here, and today we're not going to be fixing something. Today I'm going to tell you a story about something that happened a while back. And this story is going to tug at your heartstrings, if you even have a heart. So what we're going to do is, we're going to go through the story. And this is what happened. On November 3rd, 2018, we came out to this shed here to bring in the Palomino. We were going to start on the Palomino project. And as we were bringing the parts in, we uncovered two little kittens that were in a pile of leaves. And they were two weeks old. Their ears were still folded over. And they could barely move. That was Blade and Muffkin. So now we found these two kittens that were out there by themselves. There was no mommy cat around. We just found these two little kittens. Again, it was in November. It was real cold that day. I remember they were shivering. So we built a little shelter for them because we knew the mommy cat was probably off to get food and she was going to come back and feed them in that shed. So we built a little shelter for them and then we got some food and water for the mommy cat so she'll keep coming back to feed them. And sure enough, she did. She kept coming back every day to feed them. So then we kind of got attached to these kittens. And as some of you may know, we started bringing them in the shop. And then that night, I'd, be, I'd put them back out in the shed so the mommy would continue to feed them. So we did this for five weeks until they got old enough to where they could live on their own. And I took them away from the mommy cat because now I got attached to these little kittens. Now, I've always been a dog person, always had dogs and stuff, never had cats before. And now I got these kittens, I just fell in love with them and decided, well, now I'm going to keep them. They're going to be shop cats. So, under advisement of this woman who was helping me with the kittens, because again, never had cats before, she said, you need to trap that mommy cat and get her fixed. Otherwise, she's going to keep having kittens, and she's going to keep going in that shed, and you're going to be overrun by cats. So we trapped the mommy cat, took her to the vet, got her fixed, got her rabies shots and stuff, and then we turned her loose. So we would occasionally see her here and there, you know, for the next couple of years. Then all of a sudden, this last year in November 2020, she started coming around again and this time she started hanging around more we noticed she had scratches on her face like she'd been getting in a fight with maybe some other cats and she just started to hang around more and more so we'd see her every day and then we try to go near her she was feral she'd hiss at you and she'd take off so then we started feeding her and she started hanging around more and more and coming around and she's getting a little more more used to people. She's starting to come in the shop. She's leaving the shop. She's there every morning when I would come in, you know, to be fed. I'd feed Blade and Muffkin and I'd feed her. And it's a funny thing about cats. They don't realize that that was their mommy cat. You know, to them, that's just another cat now. So they didn't want no part of her. It's not like they're going to get along. So we just, you know, kept feeding her and stuff and she just kept coming around and now we got three cats. Blade and Muffkin during the week would live here in the trailer Monday through Friday and then on the weekend I'd take them home to Carla's house and they'd spend the weekend with me and then they'd come back here. And the mommy cat was still here hanging around. Well like I said it's November now. It's starting, the winter's starting to set in and it's like well what are we going to do with this mommy cat? I kind of feel bad you know. Winter's coming she's really got no place to live she's hanging around here and you know living in different little areas and stuff so we decided well we need to set up something get her set up for the winter time so there was a week in November uh, like around November 16th 2020 where we got a bunch of mild days you know we had some cold days and then now we're getting these mild days so we got the doors open in the shop and the mommy cat's starting to come into the shop and you know we're trying to you know talk to her and get close to her and she take off and hiss at us still a feral cat and then uh one night i close up the shop and i go home 
and then uh, I come in the next morning and uh, this is this is what happened now that week in November we had these mild days cold in the morning uh, you know because of overnight November and then it would warm up during the day I would come in the shop and I'd look through the window and that mommy cat would be sitting out here waiting because she knows that I'm going to feed her. And then I'm going to go in the trailer and I'm going to feed Blade Muffkin. So I look, in the, look through the window, she's not out there. Hmm, where is she? So I open the door and I'm like, Mommy, Mamo, because we, we started calling her Mamo. Mamo, where are you? Mamo, you out there? Where are you? Well, she is a feral cat. I don't know where she is. Maybe she'll show up later. Cause she would do that sometimes. Sometimes I would come in the morning, she wouldn't be here. And then 15, 20 minutes later, here she is. Purring and meowing, oh, okay, you want something to eat. Now I come back up front from being out back looking for mommy cat. And I'm up here making my coffee. I'm getting everything ready to make the coffee. Our furnace is on a programmable thermostat. So I got a program to kick off at night when we're, nobody's here. No sense in heating the building when nobody's here at night. And I got a program to kick on at a certain time in the morning when I get here. So I'm here making my coffee. All of a sudden the furnace kicks on. I'm making the coffee. And all of a sudden I start smelling something coming through the heater vents. And I'm like, what is that smell? What is that smell? What is that? That smells horrible. I smell something. I don't know what it is. I'm like, is it this coffee maker? Is it the burner? I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Don't tell me. Don't tell me that cat snuck in last night when I was closing up the shop, snuck in here and hid, and I closed up the shop, and she's got in the furnace. So I. Go inside here, furnace is running, it's burning. Then I start to hear tapping her, oh God, oh God, oh no, no, no. There's, she, she's in the furnace, I shut the furnace off right away. And I'm calling, mommy cat, are you in there? Are you in there, mommy cat? Oh, my heart's beating, I'm, oh, I'm like, oh no. Is she in there, is she? How did she get in the furnace? How did she get in there? Oh God, I'm going nuts. So I run in the shop and I get a nut driver and I take the four screws that hold this cover and I pull this cover off and I'm looking around and I'm like, mommy cat, mom, where are you? I don't see any cat. So I could come back here and all of a sudden she comes jumping out of there and she's all burned up. And I'm like, Mommy Cat, what did you do? How did you get in the furnace? And all of a sudden she jumps down there. She's crying and, and moaning and I go to grab her and she takes off through the door and runs out the back of the shop. So I run out here and she's gone. I can't see her, I'm calling her and calling her and I don't see her. So then a little while later, we seen her and her side, you'll see from the picture, her side, her fur and everything's all burned up. But every time we tried to go near her, she would take off. So I'm thinking, well, she must not be hurt that bad because she could really run. So I tell Junior, you know, Junior sees her and he's like, yeah, you're right. If, she's, if she was really hurt bad, you know, you'd probably be able to go grab her, you know. So she took off and we would see her for about the next week or so periodically we would see her and we were trying to catch her the whole time i had a trap set up with food in it she never went in that trap and we were trying to catch her because we wanted to take her to the vet because we didn't know how severe she was hurt but again i thought well if she's running around you know not able to catch her she must not be hurt that bad now i didn't realize that she was trapped in here the night before she came in here and hid somewhere when I locked up. Now I'm trying to figure out how did she get inside the furnace? So she obviously went up these stairs and went into that parts room up there. 
This is one of the heat vents right here. This hose goes to this heat vent, which comes off the plenum, which is the main box that runs through the shop that supplies the heat to the shop. I didn't realize that this hose was broken on the bottom. It was open underneath here. And that's how she got in. She crawled in. I've, I've since fixed it, but that's what she did. She got in through this hose, which I didn't realize was busted up here. And that's how she got inside the plenum. And then she fell down or jumped down into the furnace area and she couldn't get her way back up because it's a good four or five feet that she would have had to jump to get back up to get back out of here. And she couldn't get out, so she was trapped in there. So right up above here is that hole where the heat went out that I just showed you upstairs. And this is sheet metal, so she's got nothing to grab onto. So she has to take a jump, a, a standing leap from here and go up about four feet to get through that little opening that she came through. And being on sheet metal, her little claws had nothing to grab onto so she couldn't get out so she just landed. And she was probably supporting herself up here while them flames were burning her the whole time for that minute or two that I had the furnace on. Try holding your, your hand over a flame for about two minutes and let me know how much you got burned. So now eight or nine days have gone by. We haven't seen her in a while. And uh, just feel horrible, you know. We don't know what happened to her. We don't know if she's laying somewhere hurt from this and, and dying or if she died, succumbed to injuries. We don't know. It's the day after Thanksgiving. It's the Friday after Thanksgiving. We come up to the shop and Junior hears Mommy Cat crying and comes running in the shop. Pa, Pa, Mommy Cat's out there and she's hurt real bad. She's hurt so bad now, she's, she's given up. She won't run away. So we were able to go up to her and grab her and we put her in a tote and then we took her to the vet. So now the veterinarian comes in and tells me, you know, she's burned pretty bad. All four of her paws are burned bad. She's got a big burn running down the side of her body. She's got a bunch of little tiny burns here and there. They go, um, we, could, we could give her a shot for the pain. Um, but she's already started to get infection is setting in. We can try to give her some antibiotics. Um, you might wanna you might wanna euthanize her. And I'm like, there's nothing you can do. You can't you can't fix her. There's nothing you can do to to help her other than just giving her pain meds and that. And they go, well, we could you know we could debride the burns and stuff, but that's that's gonna be you know. It's gonna be very expensive. And I'm like, well, how expensive is it? You know, you, you gotta give me a price, let me know. And they're like, you know, wanted to just like, oh, it's just a feral cat. Uh, you know, this guy isn't gonna pay to have all this stuff done to this cat. And it's like, just tell me how much it's gonna be. So they go, we'll do this. Look, we'll do this. We'll keep her here for three days and we'll debride her wounds and we'll see what happens. We'll see if she starts to heal. But, you know, them being vets and stuff who work with animals all the time, they go, well, you know, she could be healed or, you know, she may not. She may succumb to it, you know, it's gonna be very painful and stuff for her. And I go, just keep her for the three days and let's see what happens. So I'm calling the vet, you know, every day for the next three days to find out how she's doing. Cause every day they have to do what's called a debridement. I don't know if you know what that means, but they gotta get that dead flesh that's burned off of her paws. Her paws were the biggest concern. She's got exposed tendons that they could see and bone. They had to take some of her claws and stuff off. Um, and it's like, you know, 
you know, she did okay and stuff, but we have to put her under sedation every day for this. And, you know, she's burned really bad. It's, it's not looking good. So I'm calling, you know, every day for the next three days. And then, and then on the, on the third day, I'm calling there and, uh, <laughs> they're, uh, they tell me that she's starting to get better. She's getting better. And it was just uh, such a relief to know that she's going to be okay. But she's still got a long road ahead of her, they said. And it's, you know, she's not out of the woods yet, but she's getting better. She's healing. And I'm like, okay, at this point, I'm like, whatever it takes, whatever it takes to do it, I want you to, I want you to heal this cat. Whatever it takes. <laughs> All right, shut the camera up. Now after the three days at the vet, now we have to go pick her up. So me and Junior go to the vet to pick her up. And we had never touched this cat before or picked her up other than when we picked her up and put her in the tote to take her to the vet. So we never had really any kind of contact with her. So we go to pick her up and we're like, can we, can we hold her and stuff? I was like afraid to touch her because she got that big burn on her side and She's got all four of her paws bandaged up, and they're like, oh no, you can pick her up, you can hold her. She's really kind of a sweet cat. She's been really good. And we're like, oh, really? So me and Junior got to hold her for the first time and pet her, and her fur is so soft, it's like bunny rabbit fur. So now they release her to me, and of course they go, well, she's still got a long road ahead of her. You're going to have to bring her here every three days to have her bandages changed and we do what's called a hydrotherapy on her paws. And you have to give her antibiotics orally and pain meds. I'm like, okay, I could do all that. So they release her to me and we take her back to the trailer where she's going to be healing. And we get her in the trailer and the first thing she does is she gets up on those bandages feet and she like goes towards the door like okay I'm healed up let me out of here we're like oh you can't you can't go you're not going anywhere missy you gotta you gotta stay here and heal and she wasn't um trained to use a litter box because she's a feral cat she went outside all the time so then we had to teach her how to use a litter box which was pretty simple to do we just when she went on the on the ground we just uh took that and like the urine soaked stuff and we just put it in the litter box and then she got the scent of that and then she started using the litter box. It's amazing how cats can use a litter box. I had dogs, you try training a dog, dogs are hard to train to go in and out. Cats are so easy, they just like, no, hey, there's a box, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a crap and a pee in that box. All right, so now, Every three days from November to February, I've got to take her to the vet to have her bandages changed and do that hydrotherapy on her. So we're doing this every three days and then all of a sudden, you know, one time I would take her there a few months later, all of a sudden one of the bandages come off and they're like, that paw's healed. We're like, woo, all right, that paw's healed. And then take her again and woo, another one comes off. Hey, that paw's healed and then got down to three paws and then the last bandage came off on the back leg which was burned I guess the worst came off on my birthday February 17th was the last time I took her up there to get the last bandage taken off and then of course while we had her there I said well you might as well give her all her shots distemper and all that stuff check her for worms she had ear mites real bad digging big chunks of that crap out of her ears. So they treated her for those ear mites and stuff. A poor thing lived outside. Treated her for fleas and all that stuff. Let me tell you something. That cat is one tough chick. I'll tell you, she is a tough chick. To be trapped in that furnace and got burned as bad as she did 
to come out of that, I'll tell you, I know why cats have nine lives now. They're tough. Them cats are tough. So here we are today with Mamo. And look at her. She's just a regular cat, just like anybody else, if you're a cat. She likes to play, don't you, Mamo? Now her pads on her feet are still, they're not like a regular cat's paws, they're all pink. She's not fully healed right there. That was that big burn on her side. Still a little skittish. But now I got all three cats living here, Blade, Muffkin, and Mamo. They all live at the house now. None of them live at the shop. They're not shop cats, now they're house cats. Here's Blade. Say hi, Blade. Look how big he is. He weighs 20 pounds. He's a big cat. Aren't you, babe? Yeah. Here's Muffkins. Come on, Muffy. Say hi, Muffkins. Say hi. Say hi to everybody. That's my baby girl, Muffkins. Here, watch how she walks on the floor. She don't like the floor. That's Blade Muffkin out in the garage, not gonna get in. Well, that's my story on how I went from no cats to three cats. And of course, the tragic story of Mamo, which turned out to be okay, She's a good cat now. We saved her. Now I'm running a cat house here. Next to the cops, they're going to be kicking the door in. I heard you're running a cat house. You know, that's illegal. Yeah, but they're real cats. <laughs> Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Terrell fixes all. We normally fix stuff, but this was a human interest story or an animal interest story because I'm the cat father. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store, buy some Terrell apparel. And as always, there's your dinner. Now I'd start hooting and hollering, but those cats will probably get scared and they'll start running around and I don't want them to do that. I start going, woo, woo. Let me see a little bit of woo, woo. There goes Mamo. Where you going, Mamo? Running a cat house. Pterodactyl here, and look, I'm here with Bladen Muffkin's mom, who got injured, but we got her back on the mend. Look, she's a feral cat, and she's letting us touch her and pet her. She loves us now, and we love her.